Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Furlong, and today we're talking about Charles Darwin. Specifically, we're going to be looking at the influences that Darwin had in his thinking before he even came up with this idea of natural selection. Now remember that Darwin traveled in this small little ship called the HMS Beagle on a five-year cruise around the world. And for a few weeks, he stopped off at the Galapagos Islands, which is right along the equator in the Pacific Ocean, just off the coast of South America. When he left, he was given several books to read, along with all the observations that he was making. And all these things led to him developing this theory of natural selection. So let's take a look at some of these. First of all, he was reading the works of Charles Hutton. And Charles Hutton said that geologic processes have shaped the earth to the way that it is today. But he said things like making mountains and then eroding them away, that takes a lot of time for something like that to happen. In order for us to have these huge mountain ranges then, the earth has to be very old. He came up with what he called deep time. Now up until this point, it was pretty well thought that the earth was only 6,000 years old. But Hutton suggested that it's probably much older than that. And we don't measure this in thousands of years, but we could be looking at billions of years old. Because if the earth was only 6,000 years old, let's face it, natural selection evolution wouldn't be able to happen in such a short period of time. However, if the earth is really four and a half billion years old, uh, then there's time for something like evolution to take place. Another book that he read was by a guy named Charles Lyell. Another Charles. Anyways, he said that geologic action today are the same that shaped the earth in the past. So in other words, the way things happen today is the way that they've always happened, and we call that uniformitarianism. So this, these processes are uniform throughout the history of the earth. And so, for instance, he looked at canyons. In order for canyons to have been carved out, which would have taken a long time for things like rivers to erode rock away, that the earth has to be very old. And so this just gave more support for that idea of deep time. But we can expect the way things happen today is probably the way that they have always happened. Another book that he read was by Thomas Malthus. Now, Thomas Malthus was looking more at the population of humans than anything else. And he was noticing, especially in London where he's from, that there's a lot of people being born and fewer people were dying. And he said that eventually there's not going to be enough living space or there's not going to be enough food for all these people. But Darwin took that idea and applied this to all the different types of organisms. Another scientist, a French guy, Jean-Baptiste Lamarck, proposed an evolutionary hypothesis. Now, he had two points to his hypothesis. One is called acquired characteristics. Lamarck said that organisms change and acquire features to help them be more successful in their environment, which, by the way, we know is not true. And the second point of this inheritance of acquired characteristics, that these traits are then passed on to their offspring. Let me give you an example of what Lamarck was saying. He explained why giraffes have long necks. He said that the giraffe would have to stretch higher up into the trees in order to reach its food source. So the more it stretched, the longer its neck got. And then because it had a long neck, it was able to pass that same trait on to their offspring, which is kind of ridiculous when you think about it. It's not like if I go start lifting weights and I can all of a sudden, I'm bench pressing 300 pounds, that when I have a child, they'll be able to bench press 300 pounds as well, which is kind of what he's saying. So we know that Lamarck's hypothesis is not right. But what it did do is got Darwin to thinking about this idea of traits being passed on from parent to offspring. Because he did know about artificial selection. Farmers were doing this for a long time. Plant and animal breeders would take the traits that they liked and use just those parents with those good traits to make their offspring. So they would do this with crops. They would do this with livestock. And we would select for whatever traits we found useful. So, for instance, if we wanted a good plow horse, and this is 1850, remember, they would take a male and a female plow horse that had those good characteristics and produce offspring with those same good characteristics. And humans have been doing this for centuries. For instance, 
Take a look at all the different breeds of dogs. I mean, all dogs are the same species, but they can look very different from one another. That's because we have bred these traits into these animals. Darwin had become convinced that species evolve, but he needed a mechanism. In other words, he needed a scientific explanation based on a natural process to explain how and why evolution occurred. When Darwin realized that most organisms don't survive and reproduce, he wondered, well, which ones survive and why do they survive? And that all led up to his theory of natural selection that he wrote in a book called The Origin of Species. And that's what we're going to take a look at in another video. And I can't wait to tell you all about it.